Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some nanny romance recommendations for you. I am in love with nanny romances. I love them so much. They're some of my favorite books of all time. So I'm thrilled to recommend 10 books to you today. We have some popular ones on this list, but also some that you might have not heard about before. So I'm excited to get into these books. The first one that I have to recommend is a classic with the nanny romances. This is A Nordic King by Karina Halley. This is the Hello Lovely Box special edition. I do not have the man cover, but the man cover is gorgeous. I will just say that. This is the third book in a royalty romance series. However, they don't have like anything to do with each other. They're all just royalty romances, you know what I mean? So this one is about the King of Norway and he needs a nanny for his two kids. Enter Aurora, who is a nanny. She's been a nanny for quite a few years um, and she applies for the position, but right when she walks into the interview with Axel the hero, he says no because he is really attracted to her and he does not want to be attracted to his children's nanny. But then his kids end up coming into the room and falling in love with her and he has like no other choice but to agree to let her work for them because his children love them and he loves his kids so much. So um, this is the romance between the two of them. It's a little bit forbidden. There's an age gap in here. Like he is full on holding off from falling in love with this woman. Um, he has some uh, like pent up emotions dealing with his wife who's passed and her whole accident that happened to her and he's just like feeling like this young woman who has so much going on for her life like she does, she would not want to be tied down to a kingdom to his family to a whole kingdom like no and uh aurora is trying to show him like i love you i love your kids like I love her so much. She is a amazing nanny. I love her. I also just want to mention that these books hold like a near and dear spot to me because I have been a nanny before. I've been a nanny for a few years. I'm not one currently, but I have been before. So like these just feed my soul. And I think they're really good when it comes to like the nanny aspect, you know? Anyway, <laughs> if you want a male nanny romance, that's really good. You have Rafe by Rebecca Weatherspoon. Sloane in here is a single mother. She has two daughters and she's in need of a new nanny. And her Rafe who applies for the position. He's been a nanny before. And right when he sees Sloane, he is utterly obsessed with her. Like he is so attracted to her. And I love how Rafe and Rebecca Weatherspoon wrote Rafe to full on right from the get go be like, before you hire me, I just want to let you know, I'm very attracted to you. Like, I just, I needed you to know that. <laughs> like, I really liked how blunt and honest he was because you don't get that a lot in romance books. You get this pent up tension that's like, will they, won't they, that sometimes can get boring, reused a lot, especially in nanny romances. So I loved how Rebecca Weatherspoon like took their relationship. Rafe is so sneaking cute and sweet and caring. Like, I adore him. He was an amazing nanny and he just loves Sloane's daughters so much. Another fan favorite is Heartless by Elsie Silver, of course. I recently read this book and there's a reason why so many people love it. It is totally worth the hype. One of my favorite nanny romances, if not my favorite, I have not ranked them, but man. Willa and Kate in here, sparks flying off the page with the two of them. I adore them. Cade is in need of a nanny for his son because he needs to go work and he just he needs he needs more of a consistent relationship like his son to have a consistent relationship with somebody while he's at work so he's gonna hire a nanny his brother's girlfriend really recommends her best friend willa the day of the interview kay decides to go get coffee and there's a woman in front of him waiting in line she drops her purse things fall out of her purse and he's helping her pick up things and he just happens to hold up some panties <laughs> he's holding her panties he tries to return them obviously and the woman's like you know what finders keepers you can keep them like yes little does he know that that's willa and he's gonna meet her in a couple of hours to do an interview so when she shows up to the interview he is adamant on saying no and like no because he is very attracted to her very vibes like a nordic king okay but his son just falls in love with her and he knows that Willa will do an amazing job so he does decide to hire her and oh, I love this book so much it is like everything the relationship between Cade and Willa is flawless like flawless flawless is book one of the series but anyway I 
adore this book and the nanny romance part in here was one of my favorite things to read about ever like her relationship with his son is amazing like there's even a kid who's like picking on his son and she pushes the kid in a pool because <laughs> he's being a little turd and I loved her. I loved her for it. A more serious one would be Eleanor and Grey by Brittany Cherry. This book takes place in kind of like two different timelines. It starts out with Eleanor and Grey when they are in high school and they're both dealing with some very heavy things going on in their life. And they kind of bond over that and become friends even though they're from widely different social circles. She's kind of the like girl that sits in the corner with a book and he's Mr. Popular. It's kind of a shock for everyone around them when Eleanor Gray become very close friends, but then something happens to Eleanor and her family to where they have to move away and they haven't seen each other in years. This then jumps to present time when they are much older. Eleanor has moved back home to her town that she grew up in and was in where she went to high school. She ends up applying for a nanny position and she has no clue until she walks into the room that it's for Gray and his family. Gray is a recent widower and he needs someone to take care of his daughters. Eleanor is in for a big shock when Gray is not the same guy that she became close friends with and started to fall in love with when she was younger. He's very much more closed off, more broody, and isn't as nice as he used to be. And she's wanting to chip away at that wall he's put up for himself. She also really forms this bond with his daughters because they're both going through a lot. Their mom passed away recently and she just needs to be there for these girls. She's not trying to replace their mother in any way, but she is there for them regardless. So I adore this book. Brittany Cherry can do no wrong. A Talia Hibbert book that I absolutely love is Untouchable. This is the second book in the Ravenswood series. You can totally read this one as a standalone if you want. However, you do meet the heroine of this book in book one because that's her sister. Her sister is the heroine from book one. This one's about Hannah and Nate and they grew up in this small town together. They never really were in the same circles. I believe Nate is a little bit older than Hannah so they went to the same high school but they never interacted really at all. When it jumps to present time, when they're older, um, he knows that Hannah is a nanny and she has recently been laid off from her previous position. He comes up to her and asks for her to work for him. But he has no clue what he's asking for because when she moves into his home to be a live-in nanny, like he does not realize how tempting this woman will be. <laughs> and oh, their romance is beautiful. I love their relationship so much. Nate is struggling this whole time with his feelings because he's like, I should not be falling for an employee of mine. Like that would be so unprofessional. So he's trying to keep his distance, but he can't help himself because he's falling in love with Hannah. And Hannah is very much like grumpy, stoic, kind of like has her own walls built up. So uh, Nate is also chipping at those even though he's like I shouldn't be doing this but he can't help it because this woman is just like everything. I loved this nanny romance and Tali Hibbert amazing writer obviously. If you'd like a novella I really recommend The Babysitter by Jack Harbin. This hero is in college and basically this is a little novella about him getting with the dad to the kid he watches a lot. So I don't know if it's necessarily nanny, but it's nanny vibes. He babysits a lot, kind of a nanny. So um, I really enjoyed this one. If you want a quick read that's really fun and hot, you can definitely pick this one up. If you want a mafia nanny romance, I recommend Kingdom Fall by A. Zavarelli. I need more mafia nanny romances leave them below please. I was obsessed with this book and I need more like it. I need more in my life. I need to do my research but if you can help that along please 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 leave Rex below. I can't say too much about this book because anything that I say could be a spoiler. Like go into this book as blind as possible. I can tell you this is about Alessio and Natalia. Alessio is like this mob boss and he needs a nanny for his six-year-old son. Natalia applies for the position and she ends up getting it. For some reason, you don't know as a reader yet, at the beginning of this book, uh, Natalia cannot speak. And so she communicates through ASL and writing. Natalia ends up moving in with um, Alessio and his son and dedicates her whole life to taking care of this boy. And that's all I can say. There's like twists and turns and hmm, very good. If you want a dangerous man, you should pick this one up. If you want a historical, I have It Takes Two to Tumble by Cat Sebastian. They never say the word nanny in here, 
but it's basically a nanny that one of the heroes in here is. Ben in here is a vicar. He's a new vicar in this town and his townspeople are like really upset with this one family because basically the children are absolutely crazy. They just pull pranks around the town all the time. They're like off the walls, getting in everybody's business, causing chaos everywhere. So he decides to kind of like ring them into gear and uh, goes to the estate and kind of whips them into shape. Not literally, but like he provides that care and comfort they don't really experience because the staff of this house are the ones taking care of them because they don't have a mother. Their mother passed a few years ago and their father is a naval captain, I believe, and has been off on the sea for quite a while. So Captain Philip, their father ends up coming back in this book and wants to know who this man is that is taking care of his kids. And so enter this very, very forbidden relationship between the two of them. I market this book as basically Sound of Music, but not Sound of Music, but it gives me a lot of Sound of Music vibes. I have to mention some alien romances. So first I have His Human Nanny by Michelle Mills. The heroine in here ends up getting hired to be a nanny for this guy on this alien planet. Um, and this is when humans like know that aliens exist and other planets exist and everything. So she travels to this planet to be a nanny. And when she sees the hero for the first time, she actually faints at like the train station because he basically looks like our stereotypical like Satan, like red skin, the horns, the tail, like everything. Like he looks like Satan. And so it scares her at first. And when she wakes up from fainting, she's like mortified. She's like, I am so sorry. I did not mean to offend you at all. It just jarring. Did not expect you to look like that. I'm okay, I'm good. She then goes home with him and becomes a little bit nanny to the set of twins that were left on this guy's doorstep. Um, and it's also kind of like billionaire-esque because he is very famous and very rich among his people. So um, this one is just a fun read. The babies in here love, loved them. Um, they get into a little bit of chaos because like they're just coming into like their abilities. So like babies breathing fire, like disaster. <laughs> and lastly, I have The Alien Nanny for Christmas by Amanda Milo. Don't worry, this is not like a Christmas book. I think like the last five pages of this book take place during Christmas time. So take with that what you will. Like goes throughout like, the whole year. I think that's what happens. So there's like multiple holidays in this book, but like it's not only set during Christmas time. I don't know why the book is titled that. The heroine of this book, her name is Gwen. She's a single mom to two boys and she is in trouble of being fired from her job because she ends up being late a lot for taking her kids to school and daycare and all that stuff. So she's like in desperate need of a nanny. Our hero just happens to be walking down the street one day and figures out her situation and decides to be the nanny. <laughs> I know very, very out of the blue, but you know what? It works, it works. He just happens to be an alien. And this is a part of like Amanda Milo's alien romance series where aliens are becoming like a parent on earth, you know? Anyway, um, so this is the romance between Gwen and this alien man who is a total softy simp for this woman and her kids. He is obsessed with her kids, loves them like they're his own. I adore this one so much and they get into so many hijinks together like him and the kids. Love it. Anyways, there you have it. So those were 10 romance recommendations with nannies in them. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the baby emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.